Good morning. I am Shirish Bilapure. I am the moderator for today's session. It is absolutely a pleasure to moderate the session on the overall raw material to pharmacy. During last one and a half year, there is a shift in working almost overnight in response to immediate crisis due to the pandemic. Almost all pharma companies have turned their attention to critical areas such as managing ever-changing demand, faster to market, changing consumer behavior and compliance to new regulation. It has also changed the way in which we are looking at the digitalization. What was luxury earlier has become necessity now. What cannot be done in last 10 years in digitalization has happened in just one year. I think everybody will agree to this point. With this session, we have an eminent panel of technologists and IT professionals in this discussion, we we'll look at evolving functions, emerging technologies, including smart manufacturing, artificial intelligence, et cetera, which will enable from sourcing of raw materials to reaching it to the patient at remote place. And that's what we look at. In this panel discussion, we'll try to cover robotic process automation, IoT enabled manufacturing, modernizing IT infrastructure, smart ERP, and issues related to the cybersecurity. I think panel has already been introduced, so I will not introduce them again. I will start with my first question. First question is to Mr. Surbhi Sekhar from the Caliber. The question is, how critical was digital leadership during COVID crisis? What steps needs to be followed by digital transformation during changing environment? Mr. Surbhi, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lebrick. Really pleasure to be here. Yes. Absolutely no, no two questions about uh, digitalization importance. It has been absolutely important. As you mentioned, it is no longer a luxury. It is not a visionary statement. It is absolute necessary. So let me just start with a small example on how entire pharma reacted to this uh, need. And then let me go into other details. So first of all, to give you a small example, as I said, this year we could deliver 42 projects online without visiting any of the pharma companies, which would have not been possible at any given point of time. So it actually is a more, you know, the price to the pharma industry because they could actually tune all their methods, the, the procedures, and the way they could get us online, online for remote. It was really amazing. So, 42 projects end to end we could deliver. Now, let me step back a little and then come to the what is really happening. So, if you look at entire journey, you know, for the last two years, there has been a very, very big shift in terms of looking at automation. But last one year is definitely a fast forward way, it is about five years' time. So, earlier the demand for the automation was created by two, two important uh, factors. One is the regulated compliance risk. The second one is the future, what is going to be for the compliance. So the regulated risk point of view, we can see that now last two years, there have been increased number of uh, citations, particularly the non-compliance citations on manufacturing. So that definitely points out to there is something wrong somewhere that we need to correct it, or it has to be improved for the law. So that actually fueled a lot of automation parts and vision from the CIOs. And in fact, we have, we have a great panel of CIOs today. They could share a lot of information with that. And the second one is, uh, in fact, FDA and ISP have come up with quality metrics as the guidelines. So it was done in 2015, but it has already gained a lot of popularity. So if some company wants to meet the quality complement, the quality metrics uh, guidelines in future, they have to have a lot of automation in place. So when you look at even the small, small requirements of uh, the quality metrics, like process capabilities, or they're asking about uh, some of the uh, very important uh, ratios or CPVs, anything, it has got so much of meaning in that. So when it actually uh, FDA or other, uh, other regulatory bodies are looking for lesser regulation on pharmaceutical companies. So when you want to get the answers for quality metrics, you definitely need to have very clean data available at all your sites. So one of the recommendations is we definitely need to see that 
every bit of the quality compliance value chain is automated, get a clean data, and then go for other things. So it has to start with that basic fundamental of make create the foundation for automation. Thank you. Thank you, Survi. It was very interesting. I think one of the other thing which also is going to change, particularly in the smart, is basically remote audits and other things will also go through the thing, which will be again technology required for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I think thank you very much. Second question is to Mr. Shriji. IoT has revolutionized pharma manufacturing and processes from drug discovery to remote patient access, at least in the Western world. What, where do we feel that Indian companies are and what looks future Indian pharmaceutical scenario? Shriji, please. Good morning, uh, Mr. Balapuray. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, yeah, so, I mean, basically what is IoT? IoT is nothing but um, uh, a setup where we enable devices or objects to be connected to each other, right, through the internet uh, protocol. Um, and, and this has been there for a while. This has been used in multiple industries uh, for different use cases. But, um, you know, in pharma, uh, this is probably a relatively newer phenomenon. Um, and uh, some of the big pharma majors have already made uh, good inroads into this in terms of whether it is patient health monitoring or, um, or be it in production area, et cetera. Uh, Indian uh, pharma companies definitely is on the path. And there are some uh, early... Um, successes that uh, we are seeing. Um, so, you know, it is it is actually in a in a good uh, situation, and I think it's almost a tipping point. Um, and now the pandemic scenario, as we all know, and as we all already heard from you, as well as uh, you know uh, from Shekhar, this has really uh, pushed uh, the industry, not just pharma, to really adopt digital technologies. And this is uh, giving IoT also a very good push um, in terms of how we can leverage it. Now, um, uh, you know, the potential use cases that you can think about is plenty. And it is uh, right from, you know, the input supply chain to the actual uh, sales and marketing scenarios, as well as, you know, in terms of consumption by the patients. Um, some of the use cases that most companies uh, would be already looking at in India, Indian Pharma will be in the manufacturing space, um, as well as in the patient space. Uh, in manufacturing space, it will be uh, about, uh, you know, proactive, predictive um, maintenance. Um, so, so basically, he, here it is all about having the right sensors um, on the right, uh, you know, points in the line or machines or instruments, or maybe even in utility consumption area, um, where we are able to get that data and uh, be able to create uh, a correlation between the different pieces of data that we see, uh, and hence be able to uh, flag it with the right people on the shop floor or in the management in terms of taking the right action, uh, whether it, it could be about uh, a maintenance of a line, a cleaning of a line, uh, whether it is about uh, you know for looking at why there is a higher uh, utility consumption going on, whether, whether why there is a higher temperature being generated. Um, so essentially, this is about eliminating unplanned downtimes on one hand, and also about uh, making sure the quality of the product uh, does not go out of bounds, uh, uh, which can actually have a very severe uh, financial implication if you do not take uh, uh, the, the right uh, right uh, action at the right time. I mean, quality implication as well as the financial implication. So this is one use case that we are seeing. I think a lot of companies are looking at, including us. Um, uh, you know, there are other use cases in between, but let me go to the other extreme, which is the, uh, which is the patient care and, and uh, you know, the healthcare management aspect of it. Uh, we, we probably are hearing about smart pills and implanted devices and things like that. Um, there are early successes. I don't think it is in a mature state in India. Um, it is, uh, people are trying out different things. Even in our case, we have a respiratory um, uh, product called Respira, uh, where there is uh, a certain level of uh, IoT enablement that we're doing. And we have a roadmap of making it uh, further uh, enhanced. So this is really about, uh, you know, making sure people are, or the patients are able to uh, take the medication at the right time, uh, at the right dosage, 
or maybe even the right way. So in our case, as example, in the respira, there is a, it is a, it is a spray, right? There is a requirement that uh, the activation of that spray is done at the right angle, in the right posture for the maximum effectiveness of, uh, of uh, you know, that medicine. Um, so that even that can be measured using gyro devices and things like that in the machine. Um, so so uh, those are the use cases that we are looking at. Uh, now, it, it can also have, you know, in cases where the patients are challenged in terms of uh, memory or, you know, dementia or, you know, whatever else that they might have, it could also enable uh, good monitoring where the care providers or the family members are given the triggers, um, either in terms of the patient not taking the medicine or in terms of early signals um, that can be provided so that, um, you know, the action can be taken uh, to, to uh, save, save the patient. Um, so, uh, you know, if I were to just take another 30 seconds in terms of the potential use cases in between, where Indian pharma companies are also looking at, um, we, 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 com- we are looking to combine the IoT devices along with data analytics uh, using you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, et cetera, to look at the production uh, uh, yield, um, uh, the golden batch kind of uh, you know, uh, uh, achievement that we can do. Um, so IoT along with data analytics is becoming very, very powerful. Um, so e- either both of them need each other, it cannot work in isolation. So uh, that is uh, another area where we are seeing there's a lot of thought process going in and actual action is happening as well. Um, in supply chain and logistics area, also you can think about different use cases like uh, a tracking of inventory. Um, it could be about uh, replenishment of stock uh, it could be about counterfeiting uh, avoidance. Uh, but these are use cases which have not really taken off in the India market. Uh, but the thought is there. Uh, we are looking at uh, how to leverage uh, what uh, and how to do it safely. As we all know, pharma has a regulatory and a data privacy issue. And hence, we need to make sure that those are taken care of. Uh, especially when it comes to the patient end that I talked about, the HIPAA compliance, so to say, which is also important in India or even the cybersecurity related issues, because these are, these are uh, points where the attackers can come in. And this is not a very mature area. So mm-hmm. we have to do uh, 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 this uh, kind of initiative with IoT in a very careful manner that we do not put the patients or the company at risk. Thank you. Shriji, one question. Actually, you took the another area into the picture, patient compliance related to the device, user, which is very good. I think that's a new angle to the technology. But one of my question was related to the manufacturing. We have uh, equipment which are old. They cannot get connected. Some of the old equipment cannot get connected. So this model of digitalization, uh, IoT enabling, is it for the only for the green field or for the brown field also it can be used? No, it can be used for the brown field as well. So we do have this challenge that a lot of the devices or machines or instruments are old and hence, it does not have the capability to connect by itself. Um, so in many cases, many cases we go back to the OEM looking for you know, upgrades or software or hardware upgrade. But uh, IoT devices usually are not about collecting the critical product quality parameters. The critical product quality parameters are usually gathered using the data that is sent by the machines through the PLC and SCADA systems. And wherever we have an issue with the machines, then we do work with OEMs to uh, make sure you know it is taken care of. The IoT sensors typically come for other uh, other type of data around the critical process parameters, like you know temperature or humidity or speed or, and, and and so on and so forth. There could be uh, also things like, for example, in the mixing process, uh, do we want to just take a, a time bound mixing uh, process where you say, okay this runs for 90 minutes and then, then, then we stop. Or do we want to have a real-time data coming from the uh, compound that is being mixed to say, okay, now it is in a good state, we can actually stop. So there, uh, you know, there are areas where we can use this kind of devices um, with certain add-ons to it, not just uh, typical IoT sensors where we can get the process parameter oriented information as well. But yeah, so it is a combination of IoT plus OEMs working together to make this possible. Rishi, if we look at the Western world, if they are at something level five, where do we see our at least top 10 Indian companies in what range? One, two, three, four, where we? I think we, I think we are at best one or two. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think there is a lot of way to go up when yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we know where to go. So sure. I think we can do all the efforts to do this. Of course. I think uh, my third question is to Jitin Mishra. Do you feel that digitalization has helped to improve processes, delivery, faster to market, etc.? Can you give some examples also along with that, Jitendra? Yeah, hi. Thank you very much and uh, good morning to each and every one. So, I mean, digital is having something which is forcing us from last uh, one or more year and then everybody is experience, experiencing that. So digital is the way of life nowadays. If you look into that, the power of digital and the, the benefit what we are going to get or what we are getting right now is the power of uh, digitization. Uh, we have a proven uh, use case in our environment and uh, on a personal and a professional life both. While I am working here, I have a hundred of things which we are doing digitally in that sense. But yeah, if you look into that, the pharmaceuticals companies or maybe a life science, uh, there is a, but, uh, a bit a reactive approach rather than a proactive because being the regulated in the market and the patient risk. So we have to be, as Ashriji rightly pointed out, is a very highly complex and a highly regulated market. So we have to be very careful while we engage with any new digital initiative. So we have largely benefit. You mentioned at your opening statement that the remote audit. So I would like to touch upon that. We have done our remote audit for uh, to our uh, highly regulated factories, which being done uh, contactless. So that's the power of the digital which we have used the equipments, which we use the high definition cameras and a digital platform to collaborate with our auditors and the regulatory parties, and which has opportunated us to, to, to speed up the, our process for manufacturing to the new molecules and the new products. That's, a, that's a very, very important for us. And that is what we achieved. If we look into the, the current situation, yeah, I mean, it's digital, which is, driving the business everywhere across the world. Looking to that in my uh, scenario, uh, my uh, thousands of employees are doing work from home where we have enabled some remote applications using the cloud, using the IoT. Uh, this is what been opportunate to ensure that the business should keep running on the pace what it was earlier. And we see that it is a situation which is triggering more to adopt the digital. And uh, this has been largely been the concept of any digital transformation is been largely accepted by the board and we are fortunate. I mean, I say we all are fortunate that the, the digital transformation has been understood rightly from the uh, management perspective and they are very much aware that what digital can push the business remotely across the world. Some of the use case like your, we have done on IoT front, that is your uh, uh, warehouse management system, which was uh, earlier be using the manual dispensing. Now it has been all remotely being done using the IoT sort of uh, engagement. The digital signatures, which was very, very important because it was uh, very important to ensure that a very minimal amount of uh, amount going to the uh, manpower, going to the factories and all because of the contactless environment. We enable all these using the digital platform collaborations so that there should not be any hamper on a day-to-day -day or a routine meetings. So digital platform will use in a very collaborative manner. All the meetings, decision being taken remotely. We operate some of the equipment remotely using uh, our uh, remote access to that particular machines. Is it proven that uh, if you look into that, the economic growth uh, looking to the digital side, it is very promising. If you look into that, the pandemic season, no supply chain being interrupted by consumers or maybe a pharmaceuticals, the seamless supply chain being enabled to ensure that all these being met. Looking to that, the larger aspect of uh, digital transformation, you know, typically the vaccines or any drug, new drug, drug discovery takes 10 to 12 years to come to the market. Now, which has been shrinking in one year, looking to that the 
coronavirus vaccine. Now, this is the new benchmark where the big data analytics, where you see the power of the data being generated from different smart devices being cutting harness in such a way that it is opportunate to shrink in the supply chain and the novel drug discovery. That's a very proven example what we see within a year time the vaccine has been introduced. This is, it happened because of the digital transformation because the big data analytics has opportunate to come into that the final decision of launching this vaccines in the market. And that is the new benchmark and that companies are learning that how digital will be powerful in our environment, whereas we can shorten our supply chain, where we can shorten our novel drug discovery. These are the proven use case. And that is what we are learning from others. And uh, we are learning from whole world that how we can speed up our uh, digital transformation for the betterment of the organization. Uh, this is something which is very proven and which has taken shape from uh, uh, last year only, which we nobody has realized. And uh, in my closing, I can say that whenever we see that the digital is not working, we have to get out of the car, let the corona sit on the front seat, and let we all push, not only the IT guy, but all the management is pushing the car, that so far is a digital transformation and corona is driving. And we are very fortunate that the whole world has understood the power of the digital transformation, which we're talking about big gates. And the speed of our IT roadmap has been shrinking from five year to one year, everything. And we see that so many things which were dreaming is now becoming as a fact of the life. But that is the power. Thank you. Thank you, Jitendra. I think uh, mother is, uh, I think necessity is mother of invention. So remote audits, remote uh, working from the home, all this is because of the pressure which we built up in the last one year. I think it changed the entire whole thing, how we are operating. I think some of the examples which you gave are real examples and these are really have transformed definitely the industry, the way in which we are working today. And probably many of things will continue in the future too. It is not going to, once the pandemic ends, I think some of things which we are learned, which we are adapted, will continue to work in the future too. That's what I believe. I think uh, next question is to Mr. Anjani Kumar. I think this is related to the supply chain. How do you build a connected supply chain? What should be the ERP strategy for post-pandemic post -pandemic pharma world? I think a lot has been changed. Anjani Kumar, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sirish. Uh, first of all, I think Jitendra has answered the question, who drives the digital transformation, CEO, CDO, CIO, or the corona, right? So coming, coming to what you, you just said is... Uh, what we could not achieve, achieve on, through the digital in years, right? Uh, we achieved in last one year, two years. That is true. And this, I would say this has been the golden time for pharma industry. Supply chain resiliency has always, always been in the focus in most industry, not just in pharma, but also if you go in CPG industries, if you go in chemical industry, it is very important. With pandemic coming in, so many variables were thrown right right from freight to the supply supply side disruption demand increased demand that now the focus has come even more on supply chain and if you look at supply chain first first of all there are very few common portals where multiple people from the various part as an ecosystem can work so that is one part which is which is getting developed. I mean, it was getting developed for years, but now I am seeing attraction on this, right? I press link and there are several of them already working on expedited basis. So that is one thing which will change. The second one, I think Sriji talked about the digital sensors, digital um, tracking equipments. All of this is going to the next level. Uh, previously, when I was looking for real time digital sensors for Across the, across the geographies, across countries, options were not there. Today you have the options. It is expensive, but there are options, right? So that is one thing, another thing changing. The third part is, uh, which you had asked is the, how is the ERP, how will ERP change? Unfortunately, I think yeah, era of ERP, I, again, my personal opinion is over. If you look at pharma, you have three triangles. One is the ERP. Another is the MES, 
which is MES sensors related application. And third triangle is your QC, QA uh, regulatory, that, which is a lab part. So the, the first part yeah, in the ERP, and the, all three, three are closely connected, correct? I, I see there is a lot of, uh, I mean, on the lot of supply chain solutions actually are beyond ERP. ERP is very minimal. Most of the solutions are bolt-on solution, which I talked about. Then there are few parts which is coming to is in the MES triangle, right? And MES triangle, a lot of MESs are offering actually the quantity checks. They are integrated with quality. So if you are planning for a batch, if quality clearance is not there, they tell you right away. Your scheduling, planning and scheduling is also part of some of the MESs. And uh, this is, I'm not just talking of the generic. If you go to uh, the innovative pharma, and uh, I know, I knew some people who are directly working on vaccine, one of the vaccine project, and this is exactly true. They do all these in MES. Right? So from, from that perspective, yeah, supply chain adds the, the entire thing into this and then integrated. Now, now comes the, again, Srijit and uh, Jitendra talked about data. If you ask me the biggest part among all these three, the triangle, which I talked about is the data layer, the data democratization. How do you do? How do you bring the data layer? Once you have the data layer, which data is actionable? How do you make that data actionable? Fortunately, uh, unfortunately, you could not do it very easily a few years back, but today with the advent of cloud warehouse data lakes, you have ready-made tools to do it. And in few months, you could do some of them we are already working on, where you could find out which data is actionable. What is the, not only actionable, if you are a little smarter and you, you know, you exactly have business use cases, you could also do what is my next, next best, best action. You just give this recommendation to the user. And that is where when Srijit was also talking about that, on IoT, we are very low. I think even on how do we use the data also, we are very low and there is a lot to catch up. But again, I have seen a lot of them getting, an example would be again, uh, it is not exactly supply chain, but if you look at in lab, a lot of us talk about how do we improve the quality of the product. It is not just quality of the product. I mean, it consists of several initiatives. One of this, how do you reduce the IIO, IOS invalidation? To do that, you have to do read all the deviation, all the OS, humanly not possible to read through the, uh, you know, go through each of them. So using the NLP, you could do that. Some of them we have worked on. And that gives you, gives you fantastic results. Sometimes you figure out that your own people, what they have classified. When your tool is telling, they are telling, no, it is different. And sometimes you have found out that tool is more accurate than your own people. So that's the power of digitization. And same thing can be uh, you know, done in supply chain side because you have various external, I will come back to supply chain side. You have various external data sources you could take. You could run the uh, web scrapping on that. You could relate that data. If there are, you could track freight movements and based on freight movement, you could actually forecast which kind of kind of inventory you should build and which kind of inventories price is going up. So these are these are various things. And this is what, again, I would say the era of ERP from my perspective is uh, over. Now, how do you create solutions on top of your ERP integrated with ERP? That is what will uh, drive your company to the next digital era. Mr. Siris, you are on mute. Thank you, Anjani. It was very nice to hear the, your views on the ERP. So they have to find out new jobs now for getting into the, this area. I think uh, for pharma, the automobile world is a, like a gold standard. So whenever something is to be done, we look at the automobile industry. They are our, uh, like a, which we look at all the, all the time, what can be done in that. And they have done a lot of business, particularly in the supplier management. Do you feel that kind of things also can be done in pharma? Yeah. So I have, before this job, I used to be the regional CIO for Nissan Motors. Oh. <laughs> and I, okay. I have seen you, you are right. And pharma, the supply chain is very much developed, but one thing which pharma does not have is the whole expiry concept, right? 
and regulated. Uh, they are also regulated, but not to the extent. Also, the patient safety is a, at a very different level. And these are the things which, um, which is very, which makes makes pharma supply chain more complicated than automobile. Of yeah. course, technology-wise, they are much more developed, especially the vision tech. If you look at the whole quality inspection, if you look at the whole tracking of the material, for, uh, the demand feeding, these are just in time. I mean, you know, there are companies, many companies who do just in time kind of inventories. Those are something which can really help pharma industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we completed a raw materials, manufacturing. Now let us come to the packaging. That's one of the important chain. So I, my question to Chakravarti is, can you describe the role of packaging and its evolution in the journey of pharma products for the entire supply chain? That is from the raw materials to pharmacies. Mr. Chakravarti. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bellapuri. And firstly, compliments to Shaker and Caliber uh, for doing uh, extraordinarily well uh, during this pandemic period. Uh, of course, LIMS and quality management are very essential for every company, but uh, that's a good thing to learn. And uh, in fact, when uh, Sriji and uh, Ms. Anjani Kumar also, both of them touched upon, indirectly they, they touched upon the packaging also. Inherently, they cannot, uh, people cannot avoid because uh, that's one factor which is uh, an integral part of every product throughout the supply chain gamut, like uh, farm to pork, uh, we are talking about uh, raw material to pharmacies and uh, thanks to ET and uh, ET Smart Pharma, uh, Smart Pharma for including uh, the, the packaging related uh, element also into this, which is very essential. To begin with, in fact, all of you know, uh, the 20th century, we all used to talk about, uh, it belonged to IT. And uh, I firmly believe that 21st century will be, uh, we'll see a lot, a lot of focus on healthcare. And, uh, but the trend started uh, even before uh, pandemic. Uh, and, uh, of course, it is evolved as the time uh, pass on. And we really strive to remain healthy and live longer. And, uh, and that, that is how things have uh, uh, evolved. So advances in lifestyles, the ecosystem of health uh, becomes very important. So what, what we are witnessing is a lot of new medicines being developed and also enabled by basically by the science and technology leveraged by research. So what, what, what is the result? The medicines also uh, require specialized packaging, of course, for shelf life, of course, for keeping up the drug efficacy and the cryogenic conditions and also the basically delivery systems also, specifically in the areas uh, now, now in the, in the gene therapy, cell therapy, plasma therapy, whatnot. So everywhere you have that, uh, this is the new niche area of packaging being uh, developed uh, on material science and farmers also. If you ask me, Mr. Bellapuri, uh, in my view, one of the major developments in healthcare sector is, uh, of course, telehealth, which is a major outcome of IoT. And uh, it's now uh, not limited to just uh, geographical boundaries alone. For example, a physician can uh, see his patient uh, at uh, any 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 part of the any any part of the uh, geography, so the best example is that even uh, to my knowledge, even for, uh, in my factory also, many people got uh, uh, their problems addressed. Uh, in the current COVID treatment, uh, doctors are advising medication online, uh, the audio visual mode, continuous engagement with the with the patients. So. Uh, how you can ask me how it is related to the packaging, etc. But uh, uh, kindly recall, Mr. Belapure, I gave a statement uh, like uh, packaging will be your uh, second physician. Of course, it may not be your first physician. So, in the absence of uh, 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 the direct uh, consultations with the physicians and the first line of uh, uh, healthcare people, uh, the packaging, uh, the final contact between the, uh, the, the actual drug and you that's a patient, is nothing but uh, packaging. So global markets see increased online retailing and continue to grow also. And this will be elevated uh, demand for uh, right packaging solutions, especially for uh, secondary and the tertiary also. And uh, packaging needs to gear up uh, customization and uh, online sale of uh, medical devices. Of course, uh, like uh, Shriji told, uh, the wearable devices, um, if you take the smart inhalers or uh, smart injectors, uh, they, they actually monitor the drug penetration also and also dose adherence. 
and maintain uh, maintain uh, maintain the health of that and uh, basically what packaging uh, can do for the, the sustainable solutions so with the minimum we cannot we cannot say everything uh, green minimum or reduced impact on the environment and the compliance packs that's more important why why it acts like a doctor the compliance comes from a packaging actually be it a physical or a digital or a enabled uh, uh, it enabled packaging the compliance pa packs to adhere the dosage regimen and of course you we know very well about the medical devices which are very patient friendly and also a lot of safety features uh, for administration also uh, look at the plight of a, a diabetic patient a couple of decades ago and today today what what is the situation thanks to the packaging and uh, enabled it uh, it uh, smart smart packaging technology of course over uh, over counter features and uh, easy identification also sometimes uh, uh, very difficult to identify also these areas also are uh, very much uh, required uh, and in a way uh, total uh, so supply chain gamut packaging has really evaluated and um, uh, we can also talk on the smart packaging tools and augmented reality but uh, in the second round i can answer you on those on those things thank you Bella. thank you chakravarti i think it was nice I just wanted to check with you with the recent advent of the vaccine packaging, particularly yeah. temperature controlled and other things. Are yeah. there newer technologies developed or done something on these lines? Absolutely. In fact, uh, thanks to the packaging technology, uh, the millions, rather billions, we are talking about the vaccines are uh, uh, we are able to uh, um, ingest the vaccines for the needy uh, all over the, all over the globe. Uh, especially the storage conditions, the logistics and enabled conditions. Of course, some vaccines needed a very low temperatures, even that is met uh, thanks to the packaging technology. And also you're able to know uh, online real time, uh, uh, the temperature status and the vaccine, uh, the health of the vaccine rather status um, at every moment, every moment you can monitor. So thanks to the packaging technology. Thank you. I think, do you feel that 3D printing has got any role to play in the packaging now in future? Yeah, a little bit, no, not very much, uh, but uh, three, uh, more than 3D printing, I, I'm, uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, the augmented reality uh, connected to the packaging. This is going to play a vital role in the pharmaceutical packaging, which I'm going to deal with in the next round. Thank you, Chakravarti. We'll come back to that later after. Yeah. after yeah. I think my next question is to all three CIOs. So I think one by one, we'll take it, take your own time. So I think first thing is I would like to know and our people would like to know what is the significance of smart manufacturing and what are the tools for the smart manufacturing? Can you elaborate? I think we can start again with the same sequence. Shriji followed by Jitendra and then Anjani. Is it okay? Go ahead, please, Shriji. Yeah, that's okay. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, smart manufacturing, as we were saying earlier, it's, it's kind of uh, becoming a need of the hour. Um, you know, there are, there are various areas where we can make the manufacturing process smart. Even FDA is now talking about going from batch manufacturing to continuous manufacturing. And uh, if we are to go there, which is, which is a journey in itself, because this means a lot of capex and, you know, changes in the manufacturing shop flow. Um, uh, but that's, that's the, let's say the, uh, that's the final journey that we'll have to take I mean, in, the, in the current era. Uh, but in between that, there are a lot of other use cases that we can go after in terms of making it smart. And some of the simple use cases I already mentioned uh, in, uh, you know, in my earlier conversation, uh, but that there are uh, areas where we can actually employ advanced analytics and get a lot of uh, benefits out of it as well. Um, you know, Mr. Chakravarti also touched about AR and ER. And that is another area where, uh, you know, the tech, the, that's another technology which can bring a lot of benefits. So, for example, uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, the maintenance activity or the cleaning activity, um, AR, VR is uh, potentially a technology which can actually make it very, very effective uh, in terms of adherence to the standards, in terms of uh, maintaining the quality every time uh, in the exact same way. Uh, that you are supposed to do. Right? This is basically about giving a visual and audio aid um, to the person or even to the instrument 
if you have to say like some of these activities are going to be automated using instruments, how do you then make sure that, uh, you know, that is done according to the SOPs and standards where we do not create any compliance or safety or quality issues? Okay, this is a significant area where, where I think all of us should be really seriously considering. Um, there are also other areas like um, uh, how do we improve uh, the, the productivity or how do we uh, uh, minimize the journey of materials to and fro from line to the quality uh, area. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, we, we all must be facing the scenario where um, the QC, QA activities becomes uh, sometimes a bottleneck in terms of releasing batches because of all the pressures that we might be there. So how can we use, uh, you know, scheduling techniques or how can we take quality checks onto the line um, and, you know, make it, uh, as continuous as possible or make it as real time as possible um, using uh, data uh, leverage as well as remote uh, connectivity devices um, you know, closer to the line. So this is another area where I see, in my opinion, this is sort of uh, not, um, not a very complex scenario to go after. Um, this is something which we should be able to, uh, maybe not a low hanging fruit, but relatively easier scenario we should be able to address. Um, similarly, um, if you really look at now beyond that into the product itself, I briefly touched uh, earlier when I said the yield management of the golden batch analytics. Um, this is where the real power of advanced analytics uh, and machine learning comes in. Um, how do you make sure that you know your lines are going to deliver the uh, expected quality as well as throughput? Uh, consistently batch after batch um, until we get to the continuous manufacturing. Um, uh, how do we make sure that this is this is now an amalgamation of all kinds of technologies and data that we need to bring together. And we will need, uh, I think, edge computing as well as uh, big data computing. Um, so, so the edge computing becomes uh, all the more important as we go, because if you want to really uh, talk about advanced analytics making an impact, we cannot afford the, for the, all the data to travel to the so-called data lake in the cloud or on-prem and then do the overnight uh, compute and you know, bring back uh, insights. That is going to be a post-facto analytics where you can consider for making future improvements or you know, tomorrow's improvements. But if you want to influence the process today and now, then you need to take the compute uh, to the line or closer to the line, which is where the edge computing platforms becomes uh, very, very important. So, uh, and, and this is this. The, there are tons of use cases that we can keep on keep on talking about. Uh, as far as smart manufacturing is concerned, I'm sure my other uh, uh, peers here have uh, some more interesting ones to share. Thank you, thank you. I think let me remind all of you: we have got only five minutes left out. So, probably Anjani and uh, Jitendra, you would like to add something into this? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, everybody is getting smart. If you look at it, that is smart car, smart watch. Everything is smart. When we talk about the smart, it is nothing is a collaboration and a system of engagement. How you can harness the data from different smart device, machine to machine, and come to the conclusion of actionable item generated data from different devices, whether it is a timeline, whether it is a shrinking of your novel drug discovery, or maybe a hyperconverged infrastructure, or maybe your SD WAN. It's not only that the environment which talk about the smart. If you have a smart factory and you don't have a smart data center, it's not going to work on that fashion. So everything has to be smart in a smart manufacturing and that has been proven and given a label from the industry 4.0 that this is the future. So smart is nothing, is a benchmark, is a destination, everybody has to save that. Thank you, thank you Jitendra. Anjani? Uh, see, only thing is in every industry, the moment you try to improve throughput, quality gets the hit. And uh, Sekhar talked about compliance value chain. Very, very important and important for us. One, for the patient safety. Two, for survival as well. And that is where the, when, the, when we are talking of a smart manufacturing, very, very important that we are not only looking at the throughput, but we are also looking at what is the compliance, right? And do you have a smart labs also, right? Manufacturing, I think Sriji touched upon most of the part, which the only part which I would want to add is enough uh, emphasis on planning and scheduling because I see in Indian pharma industry, planning and scheduling, not enough importance is given, right? 
uh, very different and it is complex also because in one factory you make like 900 SKUs. So not easy. Like if you look at all the build, build up material, it's just too much. Second one is the lab, which I talked about. One is the, gen, the data, which we are getting gen, generated in lab. Integration of the equipment, again, in very nascent stage. Two, uh, which uh, series talked about that many a times you find your equipments are not capable. So are you at the stage where you would like to upgrade the equipment if it is it cannot be connected that's another decision which people need to take and the third one is the third one which we don't do again is the linking this whole manufacturing with our sales plan because another thing to survival of the business is also your cash cash generation so you can't have unlimited number of inventory or you know if you're you are planning for something your, your demand is something else planning for something else and that is another area which should be part of a smart manufacturing. Are you following what is required in the market? Otherwise, you will sit with the inventory. And on the other side, you will just pay penalties for not supplying in the right time. I think that that's all. I think Chakravarti already talked about all the packaging aspect. So only thing I would want to add is probably a, a IoT, a, a smart rejection bins. These should also be added as a smart manufacturing. Thank you. I think... Now we have very little time, but I wanted to ask two questions and finish it up. First question to the uh, Chakravarti related to smart packaging tools. And last question to this, how does the changing regulatory scenario and digitalization, how does it play? Can you explain within very short time? We have to close the session actually. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Bella Pure. In fact, uh, uh, we started a little late, so that uh, that has a relevance. But smart packaging, I must say, uh, we are moving uh, mostly from hospital administration to self-administration. All of you agree with that. And here, the smart packaging tool uh, uh, follows, uh, uh, plays a vital role. In fact, if you talk about a connected medical device, it, it actually collects the uh, data, store the data, patient use, and tra trace the effectiveness of, uh, of the device and also the treatment. And subsequently, give the feedback to the the the, the physicians for further uh, further prescriptions and all. That is how uh, the data is very important uh, for the doctor to prescribe further medicines also. So smart smart packaging tools definitely help into that. And embedded advanced features also um, the sensing wireless communication etc. The only thing is that it can add a whole uh, host of extra functionality. The smart packaging can reduce the supply chain losses. You should not forget that. And uh, throughout the, and it enhances the environmental monitoring also, like uh, vaccines, you are asking that question. So the, here, here it comes. And also support improved uh, patient adherence. That is more important. Don't forget there are a lot of fatalities and there are a lot of uh, uh, mis mishealth elements all over the world, just because uh, people are not adhering to the, those those requirement what the uh, what is prescribed by the uh, doctors so, so here the smart packaging smart adherence package uh, plays a vital role and augmented reality plays uh, uh, in the both in the uh, packaging uh, the product packaging manufacturing and assist, uh, imagine a system engineer can actually walk through your uh, uh, shop floor and freely around the facility, receive notifications. He can check and uh, monitor and correct the devices. It, it eliminates a huge uh, uh, lot of errors also, which were very common before. You agree with me? So that also completely eliminate, uh, if not completely, most of most of the uh, the waste wastage is much much reduced, and the regulatory com compliance also become very less and less. And augmented reality in the packaging in the future will be a, will be a big game changer. I am very sure, and it will be completely. It will add a complete uh, new dimension to the uh, the packaging. Also, it helps you relay information quickly and clearly through three D content. And adding AR to the packaging can can actually improve the customer customer experience. Of course, you can use a QR code or ignite the AR content or house, housing the experience in a mobile app. I think uh, a lot is being done, a lot is being done. And thanks to digital evolution, it's very apt. Economic Times has choosed, uh, chosen this uh, smart pharma, which is the future. Thank you, Velapuri. Thank you, Chakra. And the last question of the day for Mr. Shekhar. Shekhar, can you explain what is the changing regulatory environment and how digitalized things can help us in this area? Um, Mr. Velapuri, thank you very much for this very, very interesting and important question. I can actually speak for hours together on this one. Let me be very, very precise and talk about 
what is really changing. So one of the visible changes what you can see is the entire audits which were in person now become like uh, online, online audits. So when it becomes online audits, it actually has to have a lot of data available for them whenever they wanted to see. It. More than that, when they were looking at physically, they were getting a different feel of confidence. In fact, each one of us believe more in person-to-person -person meeting rather than online meetings, but we all got used to it. So now that particularly is a very, very significant change uh, in the entire game, which you know the audits have become remote. So when the audits have become remote, FDA or any regulator, they are looking at how do we get confidence on what the pharmaceutical company is doing without compromising on the patient safety and quality of the medicines they deliver. So what, what uh, you know, as a, as a speaking, there are two significant changes which have come in the regulatory landscape also. One is that we talked about uh, uh, online. Second is they're now looking at indicators which would tell like how a company is really doing. Now, one of the indicators is CPV, continued process verification. So if you want to get continued process verification done, you need to do extremely big job in the foundation. You need to get a lot of data available, clean data available for doing the analytics. So your data science has no meaning if you don't have the right data. So getting the right data is going to be very important. That's where, by just asking one question of CPV, the entire landscape is changing into getting the data right. That's very important. Second thing is, they also looked at the, the validation, which is a major, major burden for industry. They made it as a CSV. So like computer system validation, which is a very game changing kind of thing. So you don't need to generate uh, uh, reams and tons and tons of papers, uh, papers now. You can look at how do you really test it based on the risk and make it simpler, rely more on the vendor. So vendor's responsibility is now to see that a proper product is delivered to them, which actually no, has no risk of compliance. So I would, in a very simple way, I would say, it is like BC to AD, before Corona to after digitalization. It's a huge, huge change in the entire thing. Thank you. Thank you. I think it was interesting. So what we started, I think we delivered in this panel discussion, most of the points which were required to be done. I think I must acknowledge one more thing, which I am not able to ask the question, but I think IT has become an important part of the complete yeah. business. It's no longer a small department which used to deal it's, with it's the computer and evening it's and other things. Yeah. Chakravarti, you are saying something. It's integrated everywhere. It's integrated. And everywhere. They, say, they say the next CEO of the company will be from the IT and not... Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> And that's what we expect to happen within short time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I must thank each one of you for very elaborate question and sessions. And you almost cleared every doubt in the minds of the people. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.